Drawing pants can be surprisingly tricky and it has less to do with the actual sketching and more to do with the design details. In order for you to execute a really great sketch of a pant, you really need to be clear about a few things. And if you're not, you may end up with an inaccurate sketch, which of course creates problems later on when you need to hand off that sketch to request a sample. So let's talk about those things that you need to understand to create your design. And then I'll show you how to draw your pants in Illustrator. There are four things you want to be clear about before you can draw an accurate and proportional pants sketch. Number one, the fit. This is particularly important when it comes to denim because many times jeans are classified by the fit. Whether it's slim, relaxed, semi-fitted, you want to make sure that your idea of the fit of your pant is accurately reflected in your sketch. Number two, the rise or waist placement. This is also again very important in denim, but it also affects the look of your sketch. If you're planning to draw a high rise pant, the waist placement on your sketch will be different than on a low rise pant. The rise should also visibly reflect this as well. Number three, the length. Is your pant ankle length above the angle, longer? Whatever that length should be, you want to make sure your sketch reflects that. And number four, the leg opening. The ratio of the width of the knee to the width of the leg opening can make a huge difference with how the fit of your garment is perceived. So make sure the balance reflects your intent. So today I'm going to draw a simple, semi-fitted, mid-rise, straight leg, ankle length pant. Start by opening your croquis. Mine has three existing layers and I'm going to lock the first two layers, which has the croquis and the guides for the sketch. And then make sure you have an additional layer for sketching. Grab your pen tool, Make sure you have a black stroke and no fill, and let's get started sketching. Start at the top of the pant at center front. And since this is a mid-rise pant, I'm going to start below the natural waistline. The figure template is a nude body, and your sketch should be dressing the figure, so make sure you leave a little bit of ease as you sketch. Unless you're drawing bodywear or lingerie, your sketches should not look skin tight. Draw the waistline, then start the side seam. Make a point at the low hip and press, hold, and drag the direction handles to make the hip curve. Then, since the fit of the pant is straight, make the next point at the ankle so the rest of the side seam is straighter. Draw the leg opening and then the inseam. That's the entire outer shape, and from here, you can go through with your white arrow and make any necessary tweaks. One of the things I'm going to do is add a point at the knee. I'm doing this just to give the leg a slight shape, but remember, this is a straight fit pant, so it shouldn't look too shapely. Next, finish the waistband. Use the white arrow to copy and paste the line you've already created. Use paste in front to paste the line right on top of the existing line. Then use the arrow keys to move the line down. The line will be a little shorter than it needs to be. So use the white arrow to pull the end point to meet the edge of the outer shape. Add stitching to the waistband by using the same method we just used and change the solid line to a dashed line for the stitching. Add your dart by drawing a dart line and then use the width profile number four to taper it. Then add stitching to the bottom hem. This is everything that's symmetrical. So I'm going to now reflect to the opposite side and then join the points at center front. Your pants need a small line to indicate the break at the rise. You can do this with a line and then apply a width profile to it. My preference is width profile number one. And you may even decide to curve it a bit. Some people will do a squiggly line, others a straight line, really depends on your preference. Next, draw the line from the rise at center front and you'll see a different people draw this a little differently. If you're a sewer, you know when you construct a fly front, the rise isn't technically at center front, but it's acceptable to show it that way. 
I prefer to put my rise line a little off to the side, but as I said, either way is acceptable. Next, draw the J stitch. And I find the easiest way to do this is to make a straight line parallel to the rise, then a diagonal line to meet the rise, and then drag your direction handles to create the bottom curve. Some people have a really hard time getting the J stitch right, but if you use this method 99.9% .9 of the time, it'll come out great. One thing I did forget are the pockets. So I'm just going to add some simple slash pockets to one side of the sketch. And I'm finishing it with a small bar tack at the bottom. Then reflect the pocket to the opposite side. Add any additional trims like the buttons at center front, which of course you can use the ellipse tool to create, and any additional stitching. And the last thing needed to complete the front view is to show a bit of the back view at the waist. So what I'm gonna do is make a copy of the outer shape, paste it in front, and then use the white arrow to reshape the top of the waistband so it curves up. Fill the back view with white, or shade of gray if you prefer, and then send that object to the back so it's not covering up the front view and its details. Now, fill the front shape with white. And as soon as you do this, you'll notice a few of your details disappeared. So now, we'll need to send the front to the back as well. Select the front and the back objects and send to back. Now, all your details should be visible. Front looks good, now let's create the back view. Select and drag a copy of the front body. And since you don't need all the front details for the back view, just select the objects you do need. Use the shift key and the black arrow to click directly on each object and path that you need to copy. Once you have everything you need, drag a copy of the objects by pressing and holding the Alt or Option key and moving it into place. Now we'll tweak the sketch for the back view. Raise the seam line and the stitch for the waist. Move the center back seam line directly to the center back if it's not already there. And if there's a stitch along that seam, make sure it's now on the opposite side of the seam as it would be if you turned an actual garment to the back side. Reshape the darts for the back of the garment. Usually they're a little straighter. And then add a back pocket. And for most of the back pockets I draw, including back pockets on jeans, I use, or at least start with, the rectangle tool. For the break of the rise, extend the line that's there, and I'll usually give it a little curve. Just make sure the lines don't start looking like smile lines. Last thing you'll do, and probably the easiest, is to group each individual view so it's easy to select each one when you need to use it for tech packs, CADs, or line sheets. So the actual sketching really isn't too difficult, but making sure the fit, the rise, and the length are drawn accurately is probably the trickiest part to creating a great flat sketch of a pan. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.